have you done enough sensitization about how these things can be used? And then, haven't you looked into the issue of saying how we can build these things locally in this country? Because we have quite a lot of people who could do those kind of things here. First, you asked about sensitization. But um, <clears throat> we have tried really to do as much sensitization as possible. Try to open the person's eye and show him how much. Because they, they, they have this tendency to say, but this thing costs 65000 I only buy kerosene for 500 shillings every day. But when you try to make the cost for him, he sees that he spends, of the 500, he spends 15,000 actually per month. And the cost in a year is much bigger than, he would actually afford three of the lamps. So we've tried to do a lot of sensitization. We've tried to do radio, call it flyers, uh, just word of mouth, and going to the villages and trying to train people and stuff like that. But I think, Still, somehow there is a limitation when it comes to resources. What about repairs? The they are the gadgets repairs. and they can get spoiled. Yeah, actually what we try to do uh, when it comes to repairs, when the people buy these things, we try to set up regional service centers. Because initially we would have people from the village bring it back to Kampala. But if a person, say from Kasese, bought a lamp at 65000 and is bringing it back to Kampala and then back, the cost of transport alone, is almost equivalent to the cost of the lamp. So what we did is to try and set up regional service centers so that these people, a person in Kasese has a problem, he has somewhere within reach that he can go to and get the thing sorted. Then um, the second question from Harry was, have we thought about uh, local manufacture? I think local manufacture is a very nice thing, but it still goes down to fast changing perception. I don't know if I would ask anyone in the audience here I am very sure that 99% would not want to buy a product that is written on made in Uganda. But they would prefer to buy something that is made outside the what? Outside the country. So we need to first change the perception and then people believe that the product can work and then we can go for it. That is actually very interesting. A Ugandan would not want to buy a solar lamp that says made in Uganda. However, they'll go and buy a Tadoba that's totally made in Uganda. Pretty much the same thing. I was wondering where we could find this, these lamps. We even have people in Kampala who are asking you where the lamps are found. Now, what will a person in Terego start asking you? Hmm? So where, where can these lamps be found? It's interesting. I think uh, when we look at the lead uh, lamp industry, we have very many dealers, we have very many distributors who are doing this distribution. But um, particularly for Barefoot, what we do is uh, we distribute mainly through dealerships and trainings of entrepreneurs who are able to reach the masses at the grassroots. Besides, it, it even an element of trust. If I came from here to go to Cassesia and sell and disappear with the perception that had previously been created that solar does not work, people come dump and then they run away. Somehow, the people will not trust me. So what we do is we get dealers, if there's a dealer from Fort Porto, a person from Fort Porto is much comfortable to go to that dealer's shop and buy the product, knowing that if he has a problem, he has a shop around that he can go to, not to look for a certain Charles Solwen who has disappeared in Kampala. So we have these dealers and we train uh, those entrepreneurs, the micro franchises. What are micro franchises? Um, uh, these are um, business entrepreneurs whom we bring, we identify from different areas where there is need for the supply. We bring them over and then train them to enable them to start up a business. So after training them, we are able to give them the product at a wholesale price. Then they go out and sell it at what we call the recommended retail price. So we are trying to hit two birds with one stone, trying to get the gift of light, clean light, in this case, to the masses, while at the same time creating business opportunities for these entrepreneurs we train.